everybody. Welcome back to the show. Today I have Amberly Rothfield on. Thank Amberly, you so much. How are you? I am wonderful. Good. And in awe. In awe? In awe. Is it all this amazing artwork in this room? A. Yes. B. It's not amazing. It's all really terrible. <laughs> That's a trick question. When people are like, oh, yeah, it's great. I'm like, no, it's not. It's really bad. <laughs> I like a lot of it. Do you? I'm weird. The only one that's good is that one right there because I took that picture. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good one. It's actually, to be fair, it's actually really old. That's like from when I first started shooting. So I look at it now and I see like all these problems. But I remember at the time I thought it was like such an amazing photo. That's how that's how artists work. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we grow and it's cool to see like your progress, you mm-hmm. know? Got to look back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Amberly, um, tell, how would you define yourself specifically? Like what, what, what title would you give yourself? Hot mess. <laughs> no. <laughs> From a marketing perspective, perspective. what title would you give yourself? I I've become I've become an accidental marketing educator. Okay, and how did that happen? (laughs) Um, Lord, sounds like I'm going to be bragging. Um, I became the top of Night Flirt, a phone sex web based website, uh, for about five to six years. They used to rank you solely off of how much you made. When when did you start that? Um, Lord, I'm old. I started in Night Flirt in 2006. Okay. Mm Okay. And was that your first foray into any kind of adult content at all? Ish and no. I mean, it was still like the first industry I got into was phone sex, but mm-hmm. that was like one, two, the third company I'd worked for. Okay. So the first two companies were like, you just pick up a phone. They send all the, the calls to you. Like the old school yes, phone like sex operator situation. The 1-800 okay. numbers at the end, like after yeah, midnight. Like, are you off. alone tonight? There's plenty of hot girls waiting area. to work to talk to you. <laughs> That's exactly what it was. Um, I did that for about a year and a half before I found Night Flirt. Mm-hmm. And I was making, I want to say, between 15 to 25 cents a minute, depending mm-hmm. on the company. And when I found Night Flirt, I was like, holy shit, I can make more. Now, what's the difference? How is Night Flirt different? Um, you have to do the marketing yourself. They have a, they have a little bit of traffic. Um, mm-hmm. well, I mean, they have traffic. Um, and then you can decide your own rates. Mm-hmm. You're not a different character every time you pick up the phone, mm-hmm. which is kind of good. Um, and you can also create um, like stuff to sell. So you can sell pictures. You can sell B3s. You can sell videos. Whereas with the other companies, it was just my voice. Um, if my voice went out, like it kind of is now, cause thank you. Why not awards screamed a little too loud. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, I have an interview tomorrow. Oh, this is so professional. <laughs> um, I like, I wouldn't be able to work. Right. right. I mean, I guess it's not so bad. I wouldn't be able to work, but you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you would, you'd be missing out on work until your voice comes back. Whereas with night flirt, I can kind of just tell my guys, Hey, voices out a little bit, or I can take some of my past MP3s and like, just put them on still and then I'll be able to make my goal. Okay. So it's kind of like a more of like a, um, character based, uh, sales point. And it's not just talking on the quote unquote phone, it's audio. And you can also sell visual things yeah. like photos and stuff like that. Whereas before it was literally how we think of phone sex operations mm-hmm. where you got to call in and the person, and then you talk to the person as whatever character they wanted. And I'm just, I, I assume I'm curious about how, um, like the OG phone sex operator thing worked. Cause it's kind of interesting to me. Now, would you get a, like, would you be sitting there and then you'd get like a call from, was it directly from the consumer or was it um, some kind of intermediary, like telling you, okay, I have this guy on the line and this is the fantasy that he wants you to act out. Or did you negotiate that fantasy directly with the guy before it started? Um, it depends upon the company. Some companies okay. were like the former, but most of the companies are prior to Night Flirt were the latter, where I would get a whisper. They'd be like, his name's Devin. He's 33. He really likes black girls, and he really wants you. He, he loves panty play. Previous girls who talked to him said, and then blah, blah, blah. They try to keep it within like a minute or two. Okay. And then they connect you to the guy. Okay. And then, so you kind of had a little bit, and then they would call back after, like they called the company, the company ran their bill, like did the billing information. And then they talked to me. And then after three to four to five calls, the moderator that 
potentially was listening to you, they're not always listening, um, would call you back and be like, I need notes on how you felt about this call. That way we had running notes on how to keep that guy happy. Mm -hmm. So then we could give him a better experience so that he would talk to us longer. Okay. Were, what were some of the most common kinds of characters they wanted you to play or the most common kinds of calls that you made? Um, common kinds of calls, a lot of like barely legal, like, ha, ha, I'm a, like I'm 18. Okay. Yeah, this is the totally the first time and totally the first call I've ever had. Okay. So a lot like porn. <laughs> yeah. On, it's on like the porn. internet. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Pretty much porn hub. Um, I did get quite a few milf phone calls, like, mm. like they not necessarily like, I want you to be my mom or my friend's mom, but like, I want you to be the older lady next door that like has become mow her lawn. And it's I'm, like the Mrs. Robinson kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. Mrs. Robinson kind of thing. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 It's interesting how, um, you know, we kind of see those very particular genres in online porn. And we always like blame internet porn for that. You know, it's either like young girl or older woman, like what happened to like just the hot, like, 20 year olds like middle 20 year olds you know they but it sounds like it's something that's been pervasive you know no even in in phone sex calls yeah no i don't think it's porn culture that changed that i think we like what we like and it's it, it, it just shows via what the type of content that we consume so mm-hmm. i don't think necessarily porn pushed it yeah, porn. Is, I mean, porn just famously caters to whatever people want to buy. Exactly. It's I, I, I liken it to chocolate. Mm. Um. So milk chocolate. I think that's the most popular type of chocolate, right? Should be because dark chocolate's so gross. <laughs> <laughs> I hate dark chocolate. I love you. <laughs> I hope my wife never hears this because she'll stop chocolate. But um, no. So I liken it to like chocolate. Cho- chocolate sales are. I mean, it's you can make a whole bunch of dark chocolate commercials. It doesn't mean that it's necessarily going to make more people like dark chocolate. Mm. It might increase the sales because people will try it, but that doesn't mean necessarily that you're changing a mind, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. You're going to take someone who wouldn't like it. And, right, 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 right. Got so, it. Yeah. What are some of the strangest requests that you've had? Um, had a guy who wanted me to step on rubber ducks. Okay. And he really liked hearing the squeaky noise. Wow. Yeah. So how did you set that up? Like, okay, so you would have to know about this before the call, right? Unless you had, like, rubber ducks chilling in your bathroom, which you might. might but, yeah. like, I mean, if people want props and stuff like that, you need to know ahead of time, correct? You would hope, but it, it doesn't work out that way. No. Some people are just like, I've got a rubber duck fetish, and I just, I, I'm just, i going to pray you have one. I don't even think they think that. I think they just call, and they're like, Rubber ducks, that's a thing. And did you have the rubber ducks? I had I had a squeaky dog toy. <laughs> Good enough. <laughs> yeah, like it's, it's audio. They can't possibly know the difference. <laughs> I was like, if I don't Did your dog just go ballistic? Oh my god. <laughs> if I tried to do that, my dogs would go insane. Insane, insane. It would be it would be a situation. PETA lovers, please turn off right now. Um I put him outside. I put him in the backyard until the call was done so he wouldn't hear me sitting there squeaking the toy. But I was like, what do I do? I don't have a freaking rubber duck. What yeah. do you want me to do? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know how to make a rubber duck sound. I don't have anything that sounds rubber ducky. I don't know what to do. Right. So, dog toy. Yeah. I did get rubber ducks after that. You did? Because he called back. He's like, oh, my God, you're like the only person who was ready to go. And I was like, am I? <laughs> and so he called. He started calling back like every week. And I was like, okay. So I start. I, I nicknamed him Ernie. Mm. He didn't ever explain to you why he had a rubber duck fetish, did he? No, no. I didn't want to know. Okay. That 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 skeeved me. Not it didn't skeeve me out that that was his fetish. I just I, I did I felt like that story might go a place I don't want to know. The level of psychology that you're not interested in exploring. Pretty much. Yeah. Um, I also I also had a guy that was obsessed with triangles, but not in a sexual way. Hmm. Like describing the Luxor to him did it for him. But he didn't want me to be like, I'm fucking myself with the Luxor. He just wanted me to talk about triangular things in a non-sexual way. Okay, you have to give me an example of this because, like, <laughs> this is not computing in my head. I'd be like, okay, so I was like, okay, um, I just bought this puzzle and it, one of them has, like, a slanted edge that meets another slanted edge. And at the bottom, they connect together and it's a nice little triangle puzzle piece. It's so strange. Um, I'm watching this show and it has sailboats on it. I'm looking at this. Sail- I'm so stealing it from that, from that painting, but I'm watching like 
describing the sail and everything. I would just describe stuff that are triangle shape. But I, he very, very strategically did not want you to be like, I'm fucking myself with it. I find it sexy. I find it hot. I want it to touch me. Like you could, I guess you could say touch me if it was something that would touch you, but not in a sexual way. You're not rubbing yeah. it all over your t- <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, exactly. It was so bizarre. That is so weird. Yeah. Was he a repeat customer as well? He became one. I got, I, I, what, I, how do you respond to what you were saying? Would he just be like, I mean, is this like, I wonder if, you know, he had a parental figure or something like that that would talk to my triangles or something like, is this what I like, helped him fall asleep at night? He, he was obsessed with telling monster growing up. I remember he was part of the triangle club. Okay. On the Sesame street show. You have, I'm, I'm, I never watched Sesame Street. I was really. forced to see this because of him. I did ask him why triangles, why non-sexual. But when we first started talking, I was like, he was like, oh, he would you bring up triangular stuff like a sailboat sail. Mm-hmm. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, I love sailing. I like going out and I like banging my boyfriend on a boat. And he was like, no, let's talk about the sail. And then I tried to like sexualize it. I tried. I'm not saying I was good. But yeah. I tried. Yeah. And he was like, no, let's just talk about like the sale and blah, blah, blah. And finally he was like, yeah, I don't like you talking about it sexually. And I was like, okay, you're the boss. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. Right. And apparently I was one of the only girls that like, because you could request all of these companies. I don't want to talk to that guy ever. Mm-hmm. I became one of the only girls he could talk to because girls would run out of things to say. I was going to say, I feel like that would be really challenging to come up with like different, I mean, that takes some serious, like focus. I'm like, okay, what else is a triangle that I can discuss in detail for? I mean, how long would these phone call conversations go on for? Forty minutes to an hour. How do you talk about triangles for forty minutes? <laughs> <laughs> this is so crazy. You just talk really slow. <laughs> yeah, I it's guess like, so. Right? ASMR triangle. Like, okay, so I have to ask you, like, so since you became a repeat customer, Mm -hmm. would you be, like, going out and about your day and you'd see a triangle somewhere and you'd be like, okay, I'm going to write that down because that's another triangular thing I can bring up. I was actually going to bring that up, that that became a thing. After the first or second call, I was like, okay, I need to start, like, hyper-focusing on what's triangular around me. Mm -hmm. And he he would get excited when he would talk to me because the first couple times he asked me, he was like, okay, you're going to become one of those girls who's going to block me or whatever. Mm -hmm. But then after that, he was just like, oh, my God, yes. Like you're up for this challenge. That's yeah. Great. Um, so yeah. Did you find that after? Because I assume that you're not still talking to him. He calls on occasion now. Okay. He called really. But do you see like triangles now? Like wherever you go, like has it kind of like rooted itself in your head? I I, I hated I hated trigonometry and like, <laughs> but I see it all the time now. I hated trigonometry, but now I see triangles everywhere. That's so funny. Yeah. So but Did, he was a sweet guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that. I got to say, I've heard a lot of unusual requests. That's got to be one of the weirdest ones I've heard, <laughs> for sure. I like Triangle Guy. He was interesting. He, he, kept, he kept things fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely different. Yeah. Uh, all of the, oh yeah, oh, yeah, I love your dick. And then I get to talk about something. That's what I liked about it. I liked the ones that were different mm-hmm. because it got me out of like, the typical five minute, oh, I'm jerking off to you. Yeah. Not that I'm, well, that makes it sound like I don't appreciate that. I do appreciate that. Right. But after an hour of hearing that, just to be able to talk about something different was like a nice little break. Yeah. So, I mean, I would imagine that either it just got really old or you just got so good at that kind of sex talk that it just kind of came out of your mouth without you ever really having to think about it. I'm very good at ad lib. Yeah, I would imagine. It's funny because, you know, I'm sure you probably know who Chrissy Canyon is. Yes. So she has that uh, that show on Vivid Radio and um, she often has callers call in and, and she has to like relay some, you know, some sexual story to them or they ask her a question or whatever. And it never failed to to fascinate me the way that she could go on on this long explicit story about some sexual encounter that she had and like also be like making notes on a paper and like organizing that like it was just like it was flying out of her mouth while she was doing something else i mean the multitasking was incredible to me I, she's a living I, i've been on her show before mm-hmm. she's a living actual legend i i can't yeah i I can barely chew gum and walk. Yeah. I can't imagine how she does all of that. It's pretty. It all together. It's pretty incredible. Yeah. It really is. Did you ever have any callers who you ended up like talking about 
something like getting into their personal life and then people starting to tell you about their problems. And then you almost like kind of become their therapist in a way. Fun sex is not. So I, I like to say 20% of it is sexual. Mm-hmm. Um, 5% of it is triangles. Um, <laughs> um, but no, 80% of it is damn near therapy. Um, and this might be kind of pigeonholing and maybe it's just my experience. Mm-hmm. Girls, women tend to have sex after they've gotten to know you. That's like the, okay, this is like, I, I trust you kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Guys, the guys I've talked to me tend to like need to get off before they can unload mm. their emotional baggage. So after they jerk off, they're just like, yeah, really bad day. The wife, oof, she's like this one guy, um, he actually crawled into a trunk of a car to get away from his wife when he would do phone sex calls. He got trapped one time. Um, Wait, but- so he was in the trunk of a car trunk. on the phone with you? In the garage. In the garage. And uh, <laughs> I... I found this out the hard way. visuals I'm getting in this interview, man, are just something else. <laughs> I love that. It was, it's so funny. No, he, um, he was in the, he would go in there to get away from his wife so she wouldn't know what he was doing. Um, I always wondered why when he called me, it sounded kind of tenny, but I don't tend to ask a ton of questions. What happens if and, she comes into the garage and like finds him in the trunk of the oh, car on the phone? Like, how do you explain that? Oh, it happened. It did? It did. Because one day he couldn't get out. And I'm like, you need to call 911. And he's like, no, my wife will kill me. And I'm like, mm, I think air is going to, because this is how I found out he was in, he was in the trunk of the car to get away from his wife. He's like, I was like, think air is going to become a problem. And he starts freaking out. I'm like, no, we need to calm down. We need to call the cops. And he's like, no. And I was like, fuck, I, I'm, not, I'm on night flare. I don't know your real name. I don't know how to call the cops for you. Yeah. I don't know what to do. Yeah. So I'm like, look for the little pull tap. Try to kick out that, but it was old car. I was yeah. like, try to kick out the tail light. I'm trying to walk him through what he can do and keep him calm. And then all of a sudden, you just hear footsteps. Well, like clunky foot. What I yeah. thought I was footsteps. Then you just hear a knocking on the door, and then it opens, and she goes, "Dinner's ready, dumbass." <laughs> <laughs> He very politely told me he had to go. <laughs> was that the last time you talked to him? No, he <laughs> talked to me after that. And I, he was like, yeah, no, I just drive off. I drive off into a parking garage and I just go to the top of the parking garage. No one's here. So we're good. Wait, like, how did he, did he tell you how he explained to his wife that he was in the trunk of the car? And I like the fact that it sounds like she didn't ask him what he was doing in the trunk of the car. All she said was dinner's ready, dumbass. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Which did. sounds like right out of a movie to me. It really does. It, I'm telling you my life is like a movie sometimes. I was like, what is happening here? I was just happy he got out of the trunk and didn't die. Yeah, so, right? Um, Can you imagine the weight that you would have felt on your shoulders if this man, like, I was, man dies in trunk of the car while on phone sex call? I, I was, like, getting ready to message the, the help desk at Night Flirt and be like, can you... Can you fix this? Get a, <laughs> this man's in the trunk and he's stuck and I don't know his name. <laughs> I need you to call 911. <laughs> but, but yeah, so no, he like, but he was a good example because like he would apparently in the trunk of the car, he would like get off and then he would tell me about his frustrations with his relationship. And I would, I learned very early because I started this at 18. So mm-hmm. as an idiot in relationships, I started as an idiot, but I learned to not judge. I learned to not tell you what to do. Mm-hmm. I learned to not demonize the person that someone would tell me is bad because I don't know the other story. Mm-hmm. And so I learned to just kind of keep the middle ground and be like, you know, what do you want to do? What are you, what, how are you feeling right now? Um, what paths do you foresee? And I always just try to keep it fair and balanced mm-hmm. and try to help guide them and let them see, help them see what they want to do and then say, well, here's the potential paths to get there mm-hmm. without hurting anybody. So mm-hmm. yeah, kind of became a therapist. Yeah. Ish. Sounds like it. Ish. Not accredited. <laughs> <laughs> Don't at me. <laughs> <laughs> so you went on from that there and mm-hmm. then you, what, where, what was your next step? Um, from being a phone sex operator. Mm-hmm. Um, so one day when I was about 23, damn, I feel so old. Um, so about 10 years ago, I was like, okay, I, you hit this point of burnout. Like you talk to eight people, eight people, you talk to people eight hours a day and 
you get, you know, I was taking my weekends off and I would get a couple of days off here and there and the money was great and everything, but I wanted some more free time. And so one day I was like, okay, instead of a hundred dollars a day being my goal, I'm going to make it 50. And this is like before I had a family and, you know, I'm mm-hmm. young living by myself, a hundred bucks a day was perfectly fine. Right. Especially 10 years ago. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Inflation motherfucker. <laughs> um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to make $50 my goal just for today. I'm going to take today off. And what am I going to do to be productive? I'm going to make an MP3. I had, I, I'm a gamer um, and I play video games and I you have a microphone to talk to my guild. There was a potato of a microphone that I got from Walmart for 10 bucks. And I was like, I'll just record myself being really stupid, just saying the first thing that comes to my mind, no script, nothing. And I'll sell it for like 15 bucks. Mm-hmm. 10 minute MP3, uh, you know, sells three, four times. I'm good. And I sold it. And I'm assuming this is like <laughs> your, like a like, sexual thing. Yeah, it was yeah. sexual. Okay. Um, at the time I did. Were made, you telling like little like stories that you made up in your Yeah. Head? Okay. It, it would be like if I was talk, talking to you, then I pause and I mean, obviously not as long as it would take for you to respond. But, but like, like an idea that yeah. you were responding in some way. Gotcha. Exactly. So like okay. a little sexual conversation. And I, I, I sent it out because on Night Flirt you get an email list. So mm-hmm. I sent it out to all my previous customers. And I walked away from the computer for the day. I went to the beach, came back home, and made 15 grand. What? Yeah, that face. Um, so I was like, okay, but that's also, they don't know the quality of my stuff. So they bought it on a lark, not knowing whether or not that's be good or bad. I can't do this again. Right. But I'm also like, I like a challenge. So I was like, let's just do it again. Right. Worst case scenario, I make a hundred dollars. Oh God. Yeah. So I did it again and I made like 10 grand. Wow. So I was like, okay, so like at least. You know, that in one in one day in one day. Wow. In one day. So I was like, shit. OK, so on to something Should do more of this. Yeah. And um, I still I, I still like talking to guys, but I started just making kind of an MP3 a day. Uh-huh. And um, and I caught a lot of crap because girls online were like, you're diluting the value of phone sex because they can listen to it all the time. It's not true. Um, they love having new stuff. They love, uh, clearly I know guys that still call me and like, Oh my God, this la- the, the one from five years ago is a classic. And I'm like, is it a classic? Is yeah. It-, it was still on a potato of a mic. Yeah. Um, but they still also continue to buy the new stuff. So. People always want new content. I mean, just look at porn. Thank like you. there's more, we've made enough porn to like, the world over. There's yeah. We're if done. anything, there's too much porn out there. We don't need any people. More porn. Always want new stuff. Exactly. So I just kept making more, and then guys started asking me for specific type ones, and I was like, sure. And um, I kind of morphed like it customs, customs. Yeah. Okay. So I started. Um, I, I I never got away from phone sex, but I started kind of allowing, um, oh, I guess that's allowing something. Right. I kind of started utilizing the more passive income to keep my business stable mm-hmm. and to also make it to where I got to turn down the clients that I, that drove me nuts. And I was like, I can't, I can't deal was with Was that the you. end of Triangle Guy? No, that was not the end. Oh, okay. I'm glad that you kept Triangle Guy He's, on the rotation. If you're super fucking weird, I will probably keep you. Well, at least I would assume it's probably more interesting than the usual. All like, ex- please tell me how big my dick is. Yeah. No, the guys that I typically tend to drop are the ones that are just like, they, they you know, you tell them no two, three times and they're dead. They're, they're deaf. They're, yeah. They're deaf to know yeah. um, the guys that get belligerent. The ones that are like, oh, you weren't on last night. Where were you? Okay. Like, so this is a business, sir. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not actually your girlfriend. Yeah. So, yeah. So it, it allowed me to be able to remove them from my, you know, just let them go on to greener pastures and other girls right. that will like them. So, right. Yeah. And having a passive income is is something that's incredibly important. Integral. Integral. If you are in any industry, I don't care what it is, you have to have passive income. Mm -hmm. But it also taught me about lead generation. So Night Flirt is the only site that I know where you can, um, they have like pay to view and payment request. So if I send, if I send you a pay, if I put a payment request out and you click on it, because you interacted with me, the only way to get on my email list is to buy from me, to email me, um, 
Actually, those are the only two ways. So you have to message me through the site or buy something Mm -hmm. or call. Okay, I'll put that one in there too, call. So I found that with their payment request system, I could put up a free MP3. So you can click on, on my listing and click on that and it put you on my email list. And it gave you the MP3, and it's a payment request. You don't have to pay for it. So it's still free. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of people do, um, but I don't depend on that income. That is my loss leader. So, And it gives me that lead generation. So then that built my list much faster than other girls because people were like, wait, you've got something for free. Like, I totally want that even if I don't. And they're also one of the only ones that allow you to put in your own HTML. So I was able to customize because after they clicked and got my MP3, it had a HTML drop down where I could put my top selling stuff. So like my head, what I call my heavy headers, I could put that stuff in there and a guy would be like, okay, well, I liked your voice sample. So they would click and buy one of my cheap heavy hitters, which would then lead them after they bought that, you'd get more HTML with other like more expensive heavy hitters. And it kind of led them through a funnel to where they're spending more and more and more. And all they're seeing is my content versus other people's content. So they're kind of I sucked them into the Amberly Vortex. <laughs> so, so question <laughs> yes. about the lead, um, the lead generation. Mm-hmm. So you said that in order for them to, okay, so you were giving them something for free mm-hmm. first, right? And, and then, is it a full clip or is it a trailer? It's basically just a voice sample. Hi, I'm Amberly Rothfield. Uh, I love doing domination. My specialties are blackmail fantasy, home wrecking, humiliation, and um, and foot fetish, and or hypnosis. And I love doing customs. My customs start at this price, and they just hear my voice. And, okay, okay. And so it, it's not, you're not actually giving them something they can jack off to? No, I mean, I'm sure. I mean, I guess they could if they wanted to, <laughs> yeah. but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, the average, the average one's not going to be going yeah. in on it. So yeah. it just gives them an idea and then they, they get to hear your voice. And because it's free, they, they tend to click on it. So, right. So they click on it and then they get a drop down with all of your actual mm-hmm. like masturbatory yeah. clips that, that they would like. And then mm-hmm. if they buy that, then they get access. So you're like kind of pushing them. Oh, you like this? Try yeah, this, try exactly. this, try this, try this. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. And by doing AB testing, just over time, switching stuff out, seeing what converted better. I ended up making what I call a master funnel where mm-hmm. it takes them from free all the way to spending a thousand dollars, usually within three to four days. Wow. Yeah. So you like have this thing down to a science. Yeah, I like numbers. <laughs> yeah. I can see that. Lot. That's probably why you did so well with Triangle Man. <laughs> you seem to have like that kind of math brain. I, I, I have Asperger's. It's oh, like, really? Yeah, I'm trying very hard to look you in the eyes. It's, oh, okay. It's, uh, you don't have to look me in the eyes. I'm kind of scary to look at. No, you're gorgeous, but oh, it's thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, so and that and that's kind of what set me apart from the other models. A lot of the other models, you know, um, at the time. WordPress, when I first started, WordPress was a big thing and everyone had their own website and everyone did, but now everyone's using kind of like Wix and some of the drag and drop stuff that Mm -hmm. isn't really all that search engine friendly. Mm -hmm. Uh, Google does not like the Wix or the the Squarespace and stuff like that. And, um, but, but they, as social media came around, more and more girls were just creating a Twitter and just posting a picture. And I call it the, it's the marketing system of create Twitter and or Instagram post to it. Uh, add hashtags and then win, but that's that doesn't really work. Mm. Um, a, lo- a lot of people don't realize that until it's you know they're three or four months in. Um, but it set me apart because I was doing something different, more analytical than a lot of other models were doing. Right, so, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the you know biggest. I mean, like if you look at Pornhub, you know, which is one of the biggest um, websites at all like yeah. period not just adult i mean probably top is 10 on alexa yeah yeah like top 10 websites of in the entire world um they're run by mind geek and mind geek is one of the it first everything companies that came in though and looked at porn in a purely like analytical way and really like broke everything down into numbers and looking at what converted um they they were very much like about that more so than the porn and You know, people complain sometimes about, because, you know, I work for Twisties and Twisties is one of the money geek sites. I love Shep was one of my, like, loves. Yeah, Shep is great. (laughs) I know. So I started working for Twisties when Shep was running it, but now, you know, my geek owns it. Owns it, yeah. Um, But, you know, and they send, their scripts are very specific, you know, and they have what's called ad moments, these very specific shots that they need you to get. And, 
you know, sometimes people will be like, well, I don't understand why we need to do this shot and this shot. And I was like, trust me, they have this shit down to a science. Like they're having us do these shots and this stuff because it converts in a very specific way. It's very formulaic. Very formulaic. The and they've as, got a lockdown on it and it works. It's the same thing as television. Yeah. It's everything. We can play and music as well. What is it that there's only four chords? It's the same. I think so. Something like that. It's just a. It's just the order in which you play Mm -hmm. them, or something like that. Exactly. It's formulaic, and people say that it's not as. It's not good. Like air quote. It's not good, but it's a science because we really learn human behavior, and therefore we learn what to serve you. So we learn what you'll like. So you get to happy faster. Mm -hmm. So makes it more instantaneous, which is what. Our culture's moving towards it, which is instant gratification. Yeah. How do you feel about, like, the whole thing that, you know, like, supposedly, well, not supposedly, I'm sure it's probably true, that Siri's listening to you and that all these different websites track your preferences. And so then you find things popping up in your Instagram that you might want to buy and, and that kind of thing. I know there's a lot of people that don't like that. I personally think it's great because I was like, oh, you know what I like. I'm going to buy this. Like, I don't know. I, I For me, it doesn't bother me, but I know it bothers a lot of people. From a marketing perspective, I freaking love it because mm-hmm. it makes my job so much easier. Google AdWords, like, thank God, like, it's so formulaic and it can help me like that. Mm-hmm. And it was it's called re something when they, like, they give you, they send you those type of ads. Mm-hmm. It's not reposting. I forget what it's called. Um, I love it from marketing, but I'm personally, I'm a little tinfoil hatty. Mm. So it's like, I like to tell people my tinfoil hat's not riveted on. Mm. Um, so personally, I'm like, no, stop that. No, don't track me. Especially because of the way the government looks at our type of, work. Mm. So I just worry that, uh, for example, you heard what happened with Airbnb and a lot of performers, right? Actually, no. Um, so there's quite a few performers enough to where I'm one of those people, like if I hear it once, I'm like, okay, it's rumor twice mm, paying attention. But when you hear it over and over and over and over again, um, Sarah J is one of the people who this happened to goes to book an Airbnb, can't. And when she goes to message them, they're like, oh, okay, I need a picture from the front, picture from the side, picture from this side, picture from here. Here, She sent them eight pictures, and it was very clear they're using facial recognition. And then they came back and said, we're sorry, we don't want you on, your pl- on our platform. And so it, 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 she believes it's due to the like some sort of tracking what she does online, then told them that she may be a porn star, and then that's why they asked for her face. Do you think, okay, first of all, clearly that's like very wrong, but I'm wondering if they are doing this because so many people are renting out Airbnbs to shoot porn in, which is a huge fucking no, no. And I've said this to so many people because I've had models like be like, oh, I'm seeing at this really cute Airbnb. I'm in town. You should come shoot me. And I'm like, I'm not shooting there unless we get explicit permission from the owner and a location release because I actually knew somebody um, who filmed a porn in an Airbnb and the owners only found out because they had left one of the scripts like somewhere and they found the script and they sued the shit out of the guy and the guy lost everything, lost his business yeah. and everything. If you cannot do that. You need location releases. People. You need location releases. You need explicit permission. You have got to be so fucking careful. You do. I know another girl who she shot and there was a diploma in the background. With the person's name with on it? With the owner, with the owner's name on oh, it. And that's how she got busted. Jesus. It just, A, who did not catch that? But also B, location releases for a reason. Yeah. Um, by the way, Kink B&B is an option if you ever need a cheap place. And they a lot of times. Um, oh, interesting. Yeah. They, well, I use Peer Space when I look for locations. Peer Space is good too. And then obviously I always like ask them how they feel about adult and most of them say no, but some of them say yes. Yeah, exactly. We have location releases that people have to sign. Yeah, exactly. The kink being 99.9% of the time, they're going to say yes. And I would imagine. Very cheap, too. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. I don't know about them. I'll have to check that out. Yeah, We're always looking for new locations. It's like the biggest struggle with um, shooting porn. Mm-hmm. You know, there's like the same old porn houses that everybody shoots in, but especially with twisties and the treat of the month stuff, they want um, like new, fresh places that aren't like used up, that look different, that look unique. And they're it not is. A hotel room? It is a struggle. No, no. Because also, too, here's the problem with hotel rooms. 
getting permission from them to shoot in there is very, very difficult. If they will give you permission, they'll usually charge you like four times the amount of the hotel room. They will almost always say no. And you can't sneak that in because I have a lot of equipment. Mm-hmm. So like, good luck, like sneak, like just going by with all these fucking C stands. Like, <laughs> oh, I'm just spending the night here, people. Like <laughs> nothing going on. It's fine. It's fine. I mean, like Las Vegas is like a different story, yeah. you know, when you go for AVN because like everybody's there shooting and it makes sense that you would have equipment yeah. um, in your room because you might even be shooting somewhere else, but you need somewhere to store it. So that's kind of like a different you- story. YouTubers are now getting in, pr- in trouble for stuff like that too. Now. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a whole new like world out there, but you got to be really you got to be so careful, mm-hmm. you know, because now everything's on, once it's on the internet, forever it's on the internet. there forever. Yeah. Able to get sued for anything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> okay, we're going to take a quick break and then uh, we'll be right back. Are you a fan of my podcast, Holly Randall Unfiltered? Of course you are. Well, I need your help to keep this show going. This is why I've set up a Patreon account where you can donate to support my show. And in exchange, you can be eligible for all kinds of cool, fun perks and prizes, which include autographed DVDs and books. See, guys, she's actually signing shit. Free membership passwords to my website, hollyrandall.com. Free mugs, pens, shirts, bags, all kinds of really cool stuff. So take care of me and I will take care of you. I will not only be able to continue to produce this podcast with really awesome, inspiring content about your favorite adult stars, but I will also give back to you in terms of all the cool, fun perks and prizes that we offer. So please, please support me at patreon.com slash Unfiltered. And thank you guys so much for your support. I could not do this without you. Okay, so we're back. Um, so Amberly, being the um, marketing genius that you are, um, say that. <laughs> well, more so than me. So you um, were talking a little bit before the show. You mentioned uh, SEO, search engine optimization, mm-hmm. and you talked about white and black hat, which I've never heard of. And it, this is something that I've kind of been interested in because I'm not terribly familiar with how SEO works, but I know it's something that's very important. I know that there's a lot of emails that I get from people in India telling me that they'll do SEO optimization for me. So I figure it's something that people really want, but I don't know a hell of a lot about it. Um, So can you maybe explain a little bit about that? Yeah, don't answer those emails. I don't, (laughs) but I'm just saying like so many people are offering me their services. The best book that like dumbs it down to where and it's interesting it's not like this and then you put this code here yeah um it's called three months to number one by will comb c-o-o-m-b-e okay Um, but three months to number one it's an amazing book and it's a short read and he actually gives an action plan at the end um but he he goes into all the white hat uh techniques so the difference between black hat and white hat white hat is considered the stuff that Google will love and will mm-hmm. never penalize you for. Black Hat is considered the stuff that's cheating the system, gaming your way to the top, and usually it'll get your site banned in Google. And the only reason why I learned this is because uh, my old name was Veronica Vane, which mm-hmm. now there's like a porn star who yeah. also retired named Veronica Vane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I but had her on the show. Did you? Yeah. Oh my God, that's crazy. She's yeah. um, now she's a YouTuber. Yeah, yeah, but she's also she created this um, new streaming platform um, called Vuli, I believe, for Ooh. porn. It actually looked really great. She was showing it, Paige Jennings. Paige, yeah, yeah, and she was showing it to me when she was on my show, and it looked really beautiful. Yeah, um, I don't know where she's at with that on it. She's actually, a, she's fucking genius. For yeah, she's a very smart girl. But um, I, I got it banned in Google. And then I couldn't use my own photos for a while because my wife went into the military. And so I, that's when I got a content model. Mm-hmm. We were talking about that off, right. off air. Um, and that's why I became Amberly Rothfield. And then when I, she got out of the military, started using my face again and just told everybody, hey, not catfishing anymore. Yeah. Um, well, I was never catfishing because I didn't claim to be that model. But anywho, um, <clears throat> so stop your point and play. But So I got my, my site banned because I – read some stuff online about search engine optimization. So I thought I was doing it right. And Google came along and was like, wow, you're gaming the system. And would you couldn't even go to the Google like search bar and type in veronicavane.com and it would pull up. So I just let the site go and like three months later it was purchased and they started putting her up there. It was, it was kind of cool. Um, but 
what I learned was stuff like, for example, the thing I got banned for was I would ha- I had three sites. So and then you would have a site. So I would link out from a crappy site to your site. You would link from your good site to my site. I would link from my good site to one of your crappy sites. So kind of A, B, C, D linking, mm-hmm. if that makes any sense. What do you mean by good site and bad site? Um, so one that had a ton of traffic, one that um, was ranking really, really high in the key terms that you wanted it to rank in. Mm-hmm. At one time, Google had, uh, they would rank your site site based off page rank. Now page rank is kind of hidden and you can't see it, but there used to be like plugins where you could go check a website's page rank. So mm-hmm. if you had a page rank like four site and I had a two, I would link from my two to your four. You'd link from your four to my two and I would link from my four to your two so that it would make your t- your twos look better. It would make my twos look better. And then you mean your fours? Look better? It, no, no, it would make your twos. So the idea is like I have a four already and I'm going to link from my four to your two and it's uh-huh. going to make your two eventually look better. You would link from your four to my two and it's going to make this one look better. Oh, okay. Wait. So you link your two, sorry, your four to their two and then their two gets up to a four and then well, or three, but yeah. And I, then they link back to your two, which is a different website that you have mm-hmm. that you're trying to gain traffic to. Yeah. Gotcha. So I was doing that kind of thing and Google doesn't like seeing you trying to build links. It doesn't want to see you going out there gaming the system. It doesn't want to see you writing a whole bunch of posts for websites like blog posts and then getting bylines linking back to your stuff in a really quick succession manner. So like Mm -hmm. a calculated manner. Mm -hmm. They want you to write content. They want it to be good content. They want it to be content or like produce content, if it's Mm -hmm. pictures, whatever. Um, They want it to be good content where people will want to stay on your page, get what they need, and be done. And... For and the, and the way they signal that is if someone finds your content and thinks that it's a good piece of content, they would naturally want to link to it. Mm-hmm. For example, I started putting out um, popular popular fetish trends based off of I scrubbed the API of different like clip sites mm-hmm. so that I can help um, the girls that I teach know where they not so much to trend chase and do stuff that's really trendy, but so that they can forecast how well their stuff that they typically do is about to start doing. Like, is it about to shoot up? Should I make more of this particular content, more of that? Um, But not trend chase, if that makes any sense. More forecasting what you're already doing. Mm -hmm. And that's, I mean, to me, that's a good piece of content. So Google wants people to naturally link to that, not for me to go out and like say, hey, (laughs) would you mind linking to this? This is great. Mm -hmm. Um, That's what it will penalize you for, if that makes any sense. Versus if I were to write a blog post just saying I hate cam girls, which I don't, um, no one would want to link to that. Well, I guess someone would. Yeah. Um, But for the most part, like our community wouldn't want to link to it. So Google wouldn't rank me for stuff that our community would probably want to see. Okay. Okay. So, so that's, so what's – and White Hat is just natural. White Hat's natural. White Hat is buying a site, understanding that um, – because Google doesn't even like new sites. Now, if you buy a site for six months, Google's just sitting there side-eyeing you like, mm-hmm. Well, what you going to do with that site? Mm-hmm. It wants to see you building content. It doesn't want to see you making just one page and having it sit there unupdated. It wants to see if you adding other stuff to it. And at six months, then Google's like, okay, so where should I put you – in the search engine, where should you rank at? And it plays with your ranking to see how well you do. And the better, the more people that click on there and then kind of don't, they don't go back to searching. This is what Google cares about now. Mm. How many people go back to searching what they originally searched for? Mm-hmm. It used to be based off of how long does someone stay on your page? Um, but they learn just because they're staying on your page doesn't mean that they got what they wanted. A lot of times they may still go back and try to find what they're looking for. Google cares about is the person getting what they're looking for? If they're getting what they're looking for, they're Is your happy. website like the end game? Yes. Like the last site that they visit under that search exactly. term? Exactly. Um, they don't want to see them coming back. They And that's what makes happy customers. And that is what makes more people want to use Google than, say, um, Microsoft. Ed- well, I guess that's Chrome versus Edge, but like Yahoo or something like mm-hmm. that. So, okay. Yeah. So if I had a website called hollyrandallunfiltered.com <laughs> and I wanted my SEO to grow in a way that like when you searched porn podcast, that was like at the top. How would that work for me? Now, I had somebody tell me, because I have a YouTube channel, right, Mm -hmm. which I post all these interviews on. And I had a friend tell me that on the blog section 
of my Holly Randall unfiltered website, I should put up clips from my YouTube site because that's like content that I'm putting up that Google then sees that is mirrored from one Mm -hmm. place to another. Is that Google likes like signals like that. Google likes to see that there's mixed media that you're getting hits from. If you're getting hits only from one place, this is another place that a lot of models go wrong is they're only on Instagram. They're only on Twitter. Um, and Google likes, and, and they're trying to push traffic to a, their website. Google likes to see that you're getting, people can't see my hands moving, but I talk with my hands. They like seeing multiple cross sections of people coming in. So they like to see traffic coming in from all different websites. Yeah. They gotcha. like, they like to see that there's a mix and that you're not just serving kind of one community. Um, cause is that community just like, is that where all the crazies hang out or is that like, like they want to, they want to yeah. know that. Everyone likes you. So I would take like little sample clips, kind of like um, Joe Rogan. Mm-hmm. Like he has his long form mm-hmm. channel. He also has his Joe Rogan clips where they just take like the best clips of. And it's like, I don't know, 10, 15 minutes on the long end. I do do that. I actually started doing that, but it's all on the same YouTube That's channel. Fine too. You can do that. Too. Okay. Yeah. Because I know that also too, like just attention spans of people are shorter. Exactly. And you know, some people don't want to sit through a whole hour long interview. They don't have the time or the patience or whatever. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I try to extract like the most interesting parts and like stick them and that's Cohesively. yeah exactly exactly so yeah that's that's and if you took those clips then let's say you're lazy because i am mm-hmm. i'm very i did not get to five foot two 225 pounds because i like effort um <laughs> so um if you take those clips and you were to like just transcribe them mm-hmm. that's a way that you could create Basically, you're taking one piece of content, making two pieces of content. Mm. I love taking one. Another thing, um, pro tip for models, if any models are listening, if you have a video, you can make three pieces of content. You can strip the audio out. Well, don't strip it, but, you know, make a copy of the audio, pull it out. Now you have an MP3 to sell and you have a video to sell. Um, And then you can also transcribe it. There's, like, services out there that you can just upload the video. And I think for every, like, two minutes, it's, like, a dollar. And they will just transcribe it all for you. And now you have, like, an erotic an erotic reading for people. I did that. I had one of my interviews, one one with Angela White transcribed and she is awesome. I don't think there's anyone on the planet that doesn't love Angela. Um, (laughs) But, uh, and it was okay for the most part, but they got a lot. I don't know. For me, I'm like a grammar, you know, I'm really into grammar. I was an English major. Please don't read that. It has an actual like warning label in it. Grammarly edited this because I can't. It's not good. So I'm big on grammar <laughs> and there was a lot of grammatical errors, not even like errors, I guess I should say, but you know, when you speak, you don't necessarily speak in a linear grammatical way, the way that you would write. Yeah. And so it, I had to edit a lot of it, which really bothered me. Um, so it was kind of tricky for me cause it actually takes You're gonna a have to pull frozen bit of effort. You're going to have to pull frozen, let that go. I'm no. kidding. No, but you don't have to do that. You don't have to do transcription. You can also just write a description about what it is, 500 words or something. Yeah. And that's perfectly fine too. Right. And Google likes that. Google's like, okay, so <clears throat> Google also likes websites that are more updated. Let's say me and you had a website that are, they're competition and we're going for one and two spaces. Then um, why am I talking? I don't, why am I talking like that? I'm like getting, I'm like heated. <laughs> um if I updated mine six months ago and you updated yours three days ago, it's going to take a day or two for Google to like catch on that that mm-hmm. happened. But you're going to start ranking higher than me because your site's more like updated. So right. Google likes that too. Right, right, right. So if you're just like having constant updating um, of your porn podcast, then it would pop up and be like, oh, boom, like. Okay. Yeah. So now how do I get – now with search keywords, mm-hmm. how do I implement that? So if I wanted specifically, like I said, if people search porn podcast, I want my website to pop up. How do I make that happen? There's a really good – so I'm, I'm hoping you're building this in WordPress because most websites are built in WordPress. Google loves WordPress. It's no, it's not. Squarespace. Google does not like Squarespace. I don't know how to build websites. I don't know how to drag and drop stuff. (laughs) There's actually a really cool theme called, um, there's two. One's free, Elementor, Mm -hmm. which turns WordPress into Squarespace. Um, And there's also X, which means you're going to have to load a lot. I like to tell people go Elementor first, 
and then go X. X is better. So Elementor will convert like WordPress to. It makes it look square spacey. Press to square, square yes. spacey. Yes. <sighs> or Wixy. You're like, you just make this better. I just like literally want someone to build my fucking website. I don't want to deal with it. I hate <laughs> dealing with that shit. But, but yeah, just you, there's a really cool plugin called Yoast SEO um, that will will help you be able to. It'll tell you how many times to use the word Yoast. Um, how do you spell that? Uh, well, why would you ask me questions? I should know. Y O A S T. Y O A S T. Mm-hmm. Wow, that sounded mean. I didn't mean it like that. Yoast. But yeah, Yoast. It's a horrible. But if you type in Yoast SEO, it'll. It's like number okay. one. I promise you. Okay. Easy to find. Okay. Um. But yeah, it's it's. Those two plugins are absolutely integral, essential. You need them um, when it comes to WordPress. If you're going to see on Squarespace, just be careful of how many times you say porn podcast, but say it once or twice throughout the the post. Um, you know, so those words actually have to appear in a specific mm-hmm. in in a wording in a post. So if I put up a video. Just a video. Just um, a video with like a quick blurb, like uh, talking to Am- Amber Lee Rothfield about um, uh, SEO. I would have to have the word porn podcast in that description somewhere, yeah, the, right? You could be like, this porn podcast is, talks gotcha. t- today on the Holly Randall, Randall porn podcast. Right. Okay. There you go. Then it doesn't sound like you're just sticking in the word. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So it actually has to be in there. And, but you don't want to also belabor it. You don't want to say it like, 800 times like that's the thing i don't i yeah i hate repeating words too much and also too like as much as like porn podcast is a great search term and i want people to find me when they do that i also like don't want to kind of define myself as a porn podcast if that makes sense no i understand i totally there's lots of fine line and google's actually getting really good at figuring out synonyms Mm. Uh, when i say google here search engine i just a lot most search engines are following what google does great um, in fact, it's called the LSI graph. It's at the end. Whenever you do a search, you mm-hmm. know, at the end, it's like, oh, well, here's what other people search for mm-hmm. when they search for this. That is the LSI graph. Okay. And the LSI graph means that if I appear for, if I have appeared for the porn podcast, then all of these other ones down here, I'm going to appear as well. Google is catching on that if someone looks for this, they're also kind of looking for this. Mm-hmm. So, okay, that makes any sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. Yeah, and also you can do a, what's called schema markup or schema. Someone's gonna yell at me how I said that, but it's S C H E M A schema markups. Um, now Google has this new thing called zero placement. So if you typed in porn podcast, you, have you gone to Google and then like? And ask it a question, and then it, like, answers it right there. Oh, my God. It's my – or, like, you mean when it fulfill, fills the rest of your question? Like, you start by no, saying, autofill. like, why – oh, because yeah, that's, like, my favorite game. No, no. I love autofill, by the like, way. Like, autofill. It's like, okay, <laughs> why do – and then it'll, like, fill in the rest of the question, and, and sometimes it's so funny. And it shows you the shit that other people are looking for. Yeah. Like, I think I, I wrote in once, like, why do – what was it? Like, why do farts and then it, like, continued to smell worse in the shower? <laughs> I was like, that's... Why do they? <laughs> that's hysterical. Yeah, it was pretty funny. That's great. Google autofill could be hilarious. I love Google. And also incredibly un Right. I mean, bad. I've seen some stuff where I was like, I'm mixed. I'm mi- I'm half Jewish and half black. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. This, this is offensive to both Google autofill can be super racist. But it's what people are looking it's, it's what it, people are looking it's for. It's all they're doing is reflecting what other people are looking for. So I think it probably says more about our society than it says about Google. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. But no, no, zero placement is like whenever you ask it a question, you hit search. Yeah. Then it like has that little bracket that's like, da 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 like a little blurb. Gotcha. That, that's called the zero placement. Okay. So that's kind of where you want to be. Mm-hmm. Um, that That's not pulled from, usually it's pulled from a Google-based site like um well i guess i don't know if wikipedia is google place but mm. it's usually pulled from like wikipedia imdb if yes. there's a really popular popular youtube video about it um really known sources usually get that but you can still get that spot without being a air quote known source mm. um and you can get there by using schema markups and if you do the schema markup on your page i don't know how you do it in squarespace because i haven't played around in it mm mm-hmm. But if you, I'm sure if you Google like schema markup and Squarespace, you could put that on there and it's a way of saying I'm a porn podcast without belaboring it. And it's nothing that someone searching for porn podcast would see that you're necessarily doing. It's just 
a nod to the Google spiders, the co- the thing that reads the code that, oh, this is what we do. If that mm-hmm. makes any sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that does make sense. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so what are you doing like these days? What is like your main source of income? Like what's your main I, gig? Is it still audio? I, I still make great. I refuse to, um, I've become a teacher. I teach marketing because as you just heard, I just geeked out. That was, yeah. that was the geekiest yeah. moment of my life. Yeah, you're speaking in Cleveland September 13th, right? <clears throat> yes, I'm speaking in Cleveland. Um, Where, what's the event that you're speaking at? Uh, I, I made it myself. That, it was an accident. Everything I've been doing as a teacher is an accident. Oh, so it's your own event. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to get like a kink b and because they usually allow educator space, and I found one that said they would. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went on Twitter, and I was like, hey, like— I figure we'll get, I live near Cleveland and I was like, maybe we'll get like 10 people to go a hundred people later. And I was like, fuck, I need event space. So I, the Sheridan said I could, you know, do a talk there. I had to charge cause like, I'm sorry, but that event space. I was like, I don't know if I'm, I'm okay with paying that price. Yeah. Um, and also it means the people that are more serious will yeah, show yeah, up. So course. were you originally going to do it for free? Yeah, I was going to do it for free. Really? I, was, I, was, I live in Cleveland. I was like, Meh. But you're in the marketing. Why are you going to give it for free? Because I like helping girls. Like, I. <laughs> Mom, mm, no, no. Mm. I, I really do. I've gotten a kind of a passion for it. Mm-hmm. Um, being the top of Night Flirt for so many years, so many people ask me, how did I get there? Mm-hmm. And I actually started keeping like an Evernote of, because people ask me the same question. So I just copy paste. One day I realized 250 pages. And that's how that book became a thing. Mm. And I actually started out by giving it away for free on in digital form online. Mm-hmm. And it like at the course of a couple of days, ten thousand downloads. And I was like, I know people were asking for it. Amazon people were asking to pay me, which I thought, yeah, okay, you want to pay me? Sure. Mm-hmm. I put it on Amazon, sold like crazy, and I was like, God, wow. So I've gotten more into education and teaching how to market yourself in, because I also do video now mm-hmm. that I use my face again, mm-hmm. um, how to market yourself in video, audio, uh, webcam, phone sex. Just It's basically taking vanilla marketing things that everyone does in all other industries and showing them how to apply it to their business in mm-hmm. a way that most of us aren't doing. Right. Um, but so many girls came to me in such dire need that I was like, eh, this is this is my thing, I guess. I, this is what I do. So now I, I'm getting a lot more into teaching. It's great. And it's such a, like an incredibly opportune moment to obviously be doing that because this is an age when the internet has allowed so many girls to produce their own content, to become their own bosses, their own entrepreneurs. And so you've got like a huge audience of people who need help with the marketing because most of them, like myself, have have no experience in marketing. I've never gone to school for it. You know, they just kind of go to school either. Fell into this situation <laughs> where they're like, they have a product that people want, but they don't know exactly how to go about selling it in, you know, the best way. Oh, I just lied. I did go to school. I went to school afterwards because pe- some people were like, I, you know, I'm a degree engineer and believe in your marketing. I'm like, but I did good. But I did good, boss. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I just the stories that I heard over time. I, that's why I do a lot of my stuff for free is, mm-hmm. and, or I do it for charity. I do a lot of charity fundraisers too, for like swap and mm-hmm. pineapple support and other places. Um, because I just want to give back. Like when I came into this industry, I'm not going to cry. I'm a bit, um, when I came into this industry, I was broke. I didn't have family, still really don't. I was eating out of garbage cans, literally not hyperbole. Um, oh eating moldy, um, sleeping in my, eating moldy food, sleeping in my friend's cars, like the back seats of their cars. Cause I was like, I understand like you don't have space in your house. Can I just sleep in the back seat of your car? I'll be gone in the morning. Um, and this is the industry that saved me. So if I can just help, if I can help out just a couple of people who were in that position, I'm, I'm good. Wow. I've, I've got my money. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a great, that's just a great example of how, you know, the adult industry can be such an incredible godsend for so many people and it, it can is. give people, you know, financial independence and a sense of purpose and a desire to share that with other people. Yeah. And that's, that's more or less where I come from. A lot of people tell me, like, you should charge more. Like my consultations, when I sit down with girls, $50 an hour, I know like, and cause I've had the no businesses throughout mm-hmm. all of this. And I know consulting work, it can, you can charge like three, $400 mm-hmm. an hour. I don't want to, 
I, I don't want to take from people I know don't really have a ton for the most part. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I didn't mind doing the free class because maybe they'll buy the book. Maybe they'll sign up for a consultation or maybe they will just go on and have a kick-ass business and then be like, thank you, Amberly. Then I get the thumbs up for the day. I feel happy. That's so, so great. Yeah. <laughs> so where can people find information on this um, event on September 13th? Um, it's on Eventbrite. If you could just make sure you set your city to Cleveland and you type in Amberly Rothfield, it'll pop up. Uh, it's also the pinned tweet on my Twitter, which is Amberly, A-M-B-E-R-L-Y-P-S-O. Phone sex operator is what that stands for. It's not as clever as I thought it was. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's been a problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's that's where you can go you want to if you want to get a ticket and i'm actually planning on trying to get to all the cities that cons because cons don't go to cleveland Mm, so yeah i'm trying to get to all the cities that cons don't go to so i'm kind of going on tour on accident it's all been an accident i don't know how i became a teacher like a lot of your life has just been one big happy accident it's right it's been a very happy accident but also brought on by like some serious hard work and like some intelligent (laughs) You know, um, I like some smart moves that you've made to like further your career. So. I, and I didn't, but I didn't plan them out. I wasn't just like, oh, look, numbers. I can use this to do this. Nope. I've, my entire life's been flying by the seat of my pants. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, all of us can relate to that in some way. <laughs> <laughs> the best stories come from it. Yeah. When I plan stuff out, nothing, nothing fun happens. Right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on. Is there anything else that you want to um, tell us about or let people know about before we wrap up? Uh, yeah. If you want a free copy, I give a digital copy away to anybody who wants it. Um, gum Road, like I'm chewing gum while walking down the road, mm-hmm. .com slash L slash Amberly PSO. Um, and you can download it. Don't have to pay for it. Take it. Take my stuff and leave. Fantastic. Do you have an actual like website um, oh, yeah. that uh, people can visit as well? I do. AmberlyRothfield.com. It's a membership site where I put up what I call damn near daily content talking mm-hmm. about marketing in the adult industry. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. And then I know you already said it, but your Twitter is? Amberly PSO. A-M-B-E-R-L-Y-P-S-O. And uh, do you have an Instagram? I do, but I mean, I post bunny pictures on it because Instagram hates us. Yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> I mean, if you really want to see bunnies, it's Amber Leone's you, but bunnies, it's all bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. No, this has been uh, super educational. I took I took a lot of notes. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, it's good. I, you know, these are things that um, I'm also like woefully uneducated in, so it's it's very helpful for me and and I imagine a lot of other people as well. I know a lot of models do listen to this show, um, especially girls that are newer in the industry. So I think this is a um, very educational episode for people. And, you know, we all need help getting ahead. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Holly. I've adored you for a number of years. And this is honestly a huge honor. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. <laughs> Um, so make sure that you guys go and check out her book. Um, it can also be available for purchase, right? Yeah, it's on Amazon if you want to buy it. There's physical copies. How I made $10,000 a month as a phone sex operator. Fantastic. Which has been verified by Night Flirt on the Twitter. <laughs> so she's not, she ain't lying. It ain't hyperbole. <laughs> um, so go buy her book or um, you can download it for free. Get it, get it for free. Make me prove myself. Then if go you buy it. Really? Like, don't have the funds. Otherwise, you should buy it. <laughs> she works very hard on this kind of stuff. You know what I mean? I don't mind if you make me prove it. Go. A lot of people who get the free copy go on to buy the, the physical or go on to buy a copy. So. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. Don't listen to me. She's the marketing <laughs> genius. I don't know what I'm talking about. She's just, uh, what are you doing right now? You're uh, sales funneling. So <laughs> She's sales funneling you right now. <laughs> I am. <laughs> you are, but it's so subtle that I had to point it out. Sorry, I just ruined it. For it's you. okay. I appreciate it. And you guys can follow me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And you can go uh, visit my woefully not up there in the Google ranking website, hollyrandallunfiltered.com, um, for more uh, videos and info on this uh, podcast. And also don't forget, I have a YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. We'll see you guys next week. <laughs> <laughs>